Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, we are going to continue our discussion on EMC consideration. I'm going to give you a very brief introduction what is electric coupling, and sometimes it's also known as capacitive coupling. Today will be the part six series discussion on EMC. The earlier version of discussion, the video link I have put under the description. So please go through them if you are keen to find out more about EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like and subscribe. Please click the like and subscribe button now. Thank you so much, guys. This is a diagram that I've showed it to you earlier on. EMI coupling can be divided into two different types, either near field or far field. So this is the imaginary line. Anything more than this imaginary line we call it far view. Anything less than the imaginary line, we call it near view. Under near view, it is further classified into E view coupling, or sometimes it's also known as capacitive coupling, or H view coupling, which is also known as inductive coupling. Okay, so today we are going to study what is E view or capacitive coupling. Any two conductor in proximity exhibit a capacitive coupling effect. Okay, this is because changing voltage on one conductor create an electric field, which may couple with a nearby conductor and induce a voltage on it. So what does this mean? Okay, so let's take a look on this diagram here. So this is one conductor. This is another conductor. This conductor has a higher potential as compared to this conductor. And when there is a high potential, the energy tends to couple from high potential to low potential conductor. So when this happens, this is called capacity or electric field coupling. So in short, this thing looks like a capacitor. So this is the positive edge and this is the negative edge. So when a high potential is close to a lower potential conductor, capacity coupling actually occur. So this is the definition of electric field or capacity coupling. Okay, so next we're going to derive this equilibrium circuit. So this is the two conductor, conductor one, and conductor two. Conductor one has a higher potential because it's drive by a source, as you can see from here. Okay, beside couple from conductor one to conductor two, conductor one also couple to the ground because conductor one has a higher potential as compared to the ground. So when conductor one couple to the ground, okay, it can be represented by this capacitor C, 1G. Okay, so C12 represent coupling from conductor 1 to conductor 2. Okay, conductor 2 also has potential higher than the ground. So therefore, this C2G is used to represent conductor 2 couple over the ground. Okay, so normally, there is a resistor that is connected to the conductor 2. So how can we derive this equivalent circuit? Okay, so let's take a look over here. This is the source. Okay, so this is the source. You can see that the source is in parallel with the capacitor C1G. So this source is parallel with this capacitor C1G. Next will be C12, coupling from conductor 1 to conductor 2. So it represents by this coupling over here. So after that, you can see that the R and C2G, they are in parallel. So therefore, I reproduce over here. Okay, so this is how we derive the equilibrium circuit. 
So from here, you can see that this is the driving source. Okay, so this is the noise that couple over to conductor two. Okay, from one, the first conductor, couple to the second conductor, and this is the amount of noise that couple over. How can we simplify this diagram here? So since the source is in parallel with this capacitor C, 1G, okay, we can actually intimate away this C1G. So from here, okay, we can conclude that C1G don't pay any contribution to the electric field coupling. So our achieve is to find what is Vn, the noise that couple from conductor one to conductor two. Okay, so these are the formula to obtain the emittance of capacitor. Okay, so we can obtain the emittance for capacitor C12 and capacitor C2G as shown over here. Next, we want to obtain the emittance of these two items that is in parallel, C2G and R. So we can calculate by using this equation here. So this equation is just like calculate the resistor that is in parallel. So this is the formula. So we also know that this emittance of capacitor is 1 over J omega C2G. So that's how we get this number. The same for this X emittance of this C2G. Okay, we actually obtain the formula here. So next, okay, we're going to simplify them by having a common factor here. Okay, so this is a common among these two terms. So what I need to do is I multiply J omega C2G onto this R. And that's how I arrive at this formula. So once I actually see a same term, these two terms, so I can actually cancel them. And I simplify the equation here. So this is the total emittance of C2G parallel with R. So next, okay, I will apply this voltage divider rule. Okay, so the key idea is to find the noise coupled to the conductor two. So this Bn is equal to the source voltage multiplied by the emittance that form up by this capacitor 2G and R. Okay, as you can see here. And then I also need to consider the emittance of C12 here. So you can see from this point here. So this is the noise that couple over from the source to the conductor 2. Okay, so earlier on we have found this number okay which is shown over here so we know the emittance for c12 okay so this is the emittance okay so this is also what we have found earlier on so i rewrite this formula here okay so next okay i'm again i'm going to put this into a common factor okay so what i need to do is basically i multiply this one i multiply by one plus j omega c2gr so which is appeared here. So next term is basically I use this R multiplied by J omega C12, which is present here. So next, okay, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm simplify it further. So this is the top portion. This is the bottom portion. So this is a divide. So I swap the position. So this part come to the top. This part come to the bottom. And from here, I easily see that there's a common term. So I remove away the common term to simplify. So finally, I actually achieve this Vn, the noise couple from conductor one to conductor two. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.